Hi, I'm Dr. Henry Black, Clinical Professor of Internal Medicine at the New York University School of Medicine and a member of the Center for the Prevention of Cardiovascular Disease. I'm also President of the American Society of Hypertension. I'm here today with one of my colleagues, Dr. Howard Weintraub, at our center, who's a lipid expert. And uh, where I think I know pretty much what to do with somebody with hypertension, there are times I get a little uncertain about how to deal with someone with a complicated or even sometimes a simple lipid problem. Howard, what's your approach to somebody with a dyslipidemia? Well, thanks for having me, Henry. Um, a, a simple dyslipidemia in general, we would like to get their LDL as low as possible. That is, I guess, the, the LDL for idiots is, you know, lipids for idiots, get LDL as low as possible. That is where it, that's really what we do. But then again, one size does not fit all. But do you agree with the people who think if you're really a high risk individual or have had an event, your LDL should be less than 70? Uh, yes, I do. I think that ultimately one of the things that, and you recall our lipid symposium with the spirited discussion we had, um, LDL is certainly a very formidable predictor of atherosclerotic events. It seems to be a formidable predictor in people that have had an event acute coronary syndrome, such as study called Prove It, et cetera, um, and also appears to be a formidable predictor in people that have had interventions. Um, what appears to go on is that not only is 70 good, but 50 and 60 are better, and maybe even less than 40 is better, and the guys at the Brigham have done subsequent post hoc analyses, which have shown that there w appears to be a relatively linear relationship between how low you got LDL and the likelihood or... So, so the old concerns that Steve Hulley and others had about lowering cholesterol too far, we think it pretty much put to, put to rest. As by all means, Henry, I, I believe that there's some very smart people who feel that the only LDL you need is in your liver. And we are born with LDLs of 30 to 40, mm -hmm. which was ample to make sterile hormones and make myelin that covers our brain and our nerves. So th having more than that is questionable merit. So your approach then to Let's I'll give you a typical patient, somebody I see with clear hypertension, needs treatment, mm -hmm. who has a total cholesterol of 220 and an LDL of 140. Okay. No other problems. Okay. Doesn't have metabolic syndrome, which right. we'll get to sure. as well. Sure. What would you do with that? Um, well, the first thing I do with all these patients is give them the opportunity to try to realize that there can be a lifestyle approach well, to Well, he's this. already done that. Fine. He's thin, I, he's active, he eats low-fat diet. Well, he's your patient. I would have expected it. But nonetheless, I... Um, I give everybody this opportunity because if we don't mention it, they don't think it's important. Mm -hmm. Now, having already done that, I would then offer them a statin type drug. In general, this is the best tolerated class of medicine and the most effective in so far as uh, the amount of medicine you need to take and also is the best adjudicated for event reduction. Do you care which one? I do, but we, are, we have been sort of led into using some of the, the more generic statins. I am firmly convinced that the newer branded statins are more potent in lowering LDL. You could use lower doses to achieve better LDL reductions. They also tend to be better at lowering triglycerides. So resuvastatin and atorvastatin, known as Crestor and Lipitor, will have better triglyceride and LDL reductions and may be better, if we believe it, in, in reducing inflammatory markers. But this is not to say that, say, <coughs> say but generic simvastatin is a wonderful drug. Be okay as well. Right, but you got to be care You have to really use an appropriate amount of the drug. One of the things that's overlooked, Henry, <coughs> is that in the NCEP, the National Cholesterol Education Panel, it is called for that you should lower LDL 30 to 40 percent when you decide to treat, mm -hmm. which then gives you kind of a platform to determine how much drug you have to use. There's a little difference, though. If you say that and you start very high, you may not reach the 70 goal or the 100 goal. Exactly correct. So that's why what they say is they realize that in many cases, you, you start with an LDL of 220, you're going to need some clobbering right. in order to get LDL below 70. So what they say is you should get a minimum of 30 to 40% reduction. <clears throat> try to get at least 50%, and that is some newer data that has come out of the, lip, the Jupiter study, uh, that if you lowered LDL 50%, it was almost as impactful as getting LDL down to below 70 in that, in that population. Setting goals is a real, real art. Yes, well, Henry, in hypertension, you become a star at doing that. Um, I think that it's important to realize that there are certain minimum parameters. I am distressed by what I see sometimes in the community where people will consider that if somebody is on a statin, giving them, say, 10 milligrams of pravastatin is enough. They're on the statin, even though their LDL is reduced not much more impactfully than garlic and almonds. 
Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that, that is, doesn't do the patient any good. What do you do with the patient who isn't, doesn't get that reduction or because of myopathy or some other side effect can't take a statin? What do you do, what do, you do then? Yeah, I thought you were a friend, Henry. <laughs> Um, so in any event, what, that, what, we call, what we now deal with is the idea that either you can't tolerate the effective dose of the statin or on the effective dose uh, or maximal effective dose of the statin, you're not there. So you so, are resistant hypercholesterolemia. Right, with, with, exactly. Right, there it is. So, so in those cases, um, using another drug that would be tailored to the patient, this is important, mm -hmm. uh, would be useful. So. If your problem is only LDL, then you are left with either using a drug that, that binds cholesterol in the bowel, and it does so in one of two ways. One is azetamibe, which is called Zetia, and the other one is a, are bile acid resins that have been around for centuries, mm -hmm. uh, no, tens of years. A long time. Right, a long time. Uh, currently, the, uh, there's only one branded one. These tend to be a little bit less well tolerated, but they also have been associated with event reduction in studies that were carried out in the 80s and mm -hmm. 70s. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, if we, were to, if we were to use, if we were to take one of two approaches, one is the approach that you, we always teach people, the event-driven approach. Event-driven approach says you, you would use a bile acid resin because there's data there. However, if, if you ask a patient would they like to take a drug that may have a foul taste, be a huge pill, and bind other medications and make them constipated and bloated, or you can take one pill a day that does none of that, what would you think they're going to choose? Would you, why would you worry about that ESA? Well, you know, to say the truth, Henry, I'm not horribly worried about it. Mm -hmm. I, I think that um, the, the study that impugned Zetia's effectiveness was a poorly designed study. Uh, we discussed this at length, and the population they studied was one that should have never been included. That was called? At, in, enhance. Enhance. And Enhance was a, a study that, that looked at a zetamibe added on to a statin in a, 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 a people that were born with familial hypercholesterolemia. So not the population we've been talking about, These right? are people with hugely high cholesterol. Is there anything new coming on about that? <clears throat> there, is, there was a study that was just recently terminated called Arbiter 6. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, the sixth in the line of studies. These are all surrogate marker carotid imaging studies uh, <clears throat> in which a combination of a Zetia, a Zetia with, a st with, a, with simvastatin versus Zetia, sorry, versus simvastatin with niacin were compared looking at carotid mm. artery atherosclerosis. They stopped the study prematurely. Alan Taylor, who's the, pro, the, pro, the investigator in this case, did not give reasons for this. So we don't know why they stopped. All he has said was at some point it'll be written in, a, in an appropriate journal. Okay. So we have no idea. So stay this, tuned. Right, film at 11. So, now, now, now you. But you asked what I use, do I use yeah. Zetia? The answer is I still do. Yeah. It is well tolerated. And we have shown, not we, others have shown that getting LDL down by doing intestinal bypass results in less atherosclerosis. Yeah. So to me, if you lower LDL, you should be able to identify a reduction in atherosclerosis. Um, I, however, what I try to do and what I encourage physicians to do is not accept low-dose statin and then add Zetia unless the patient is truly intolerant to the statin. So you only use that later on. Exactly. Use it only when the statin is either ineffective or not tolerated at higher doses. But ineffective may be that it's partially effective and then you can... <coughs> exactly. Now, now you mentioned uh, high triglycerides and treating that. Sure. What do you do for that? I, I believe that in this country we have been very ignorant to the effects of triglycerides and part of it may have come because of, I'm sorry to say, because of poor marketing exposure. Um, but triglycerides have been shown to significantly augment and modify the atherogenicity, the risk of LDL. Uh, Howard, thank you very much. I think I know what to do with LDL now, mm -hmm. but I'm not so sure yet about triglycerides and HDL. We need to talk about that. Good idea. Thank you.